tastes so good. This is my baby! We got lunch. I'm Zachary Fowler, and you're watching Fowler's Makery and Mischief. All right, we are back on the tiny house build. It's been a little bit, as you can see. She's sitting down there without a roof on. There's leaves on the trees. I've been busy, East Coast Slingshot Tournament and doing other videos. We need to get that roof on, so I brought in reinforcements. You might remember this guy, Ralph, right there, and Chris. Hello. Chris, obviously, you know who Chris is, if you've watched ever at all. But uh, Ralph helped me with the glamper camper at the end of the project, helped me bust that out and get that on the road. And we need all the help we can get. So we got our new Jackery Explorer 2000 Plus with us. That's gonna be powering the rest of the build. And I'm gonna actually install this one when it's all said and done as my main power unit for the entire tiny home with the solar panels because this one has extended battery packs. So you can put up to five extended battery packs bringing up to 12 K in watt hours. Um, there's a link in the description below for our gear video. We did a full review on this. And I'll sprinkle some more information in here for you as the video goes on. Since last time you saw, um, if you're just tuning in, you haven't seen last times, check out part one and part two linked in the description below. Some boulders were dropped off last time and we did some more stonework so it's permanent. I didn't do a very good job in part two to show you how much we spent. In part one, we showed everything that we did spend and most of the materials were purchased in advance. We did show the wrong price at one point, but we did add it to the total correctly. At the end of part one, we are just about $10,000. Part two, we spent another thousand on the pit, some more on Facebook to get a container to lock it up, and about $3,000 worth of materials, and some boulders for a thousand bucks. If you were just trying to copy what I'm doing, you wouldn't be doing all this landscaping, and you'd only be at less than 13,000 so far. There's plenty of awesome videos out there of people that build tiny houses for 400 bucks, or Modern Self-Reliance built this beautiful little A-frame-ish type tiny house for a thousand bucks, or you can go as expensive as a hundred thousand, like this guy necessary in case a squirrel yeah. goes by or something well while we get figured out you want to bring that box of slingshot targets down yep. and i'm thinking we've been talking about doing this for years chris and i like uh let's set up some targets and stuff you can use the electric chainsaw and we could nip down some of these taller things after the east coast slingshot tournament and i did so poorly i'm just like I'm really excited and so inspired by the guys that did well in the tournament that I need to get back on it and bring my game back up. Less talking, more working. We got a lot to do. Let's, uh, let's montage. Good enough. Got a little man glitter on you. Yes, a little, little bling. All right, she's getting down to about 80%. We don't have it hooked up to solar panels yet. It's one thing to say it can run multiple tools at a time, but check this out. That's a lot of power. Three power tools at once, two major power tools, the chop saw. I'd say power tools, totally awesome. There we go. We are making power and taking power. <laughs> it's a bit overcast, so we're not putting much into her today. And we're gonna be taking a lot out, but it'll have enough to, uh, enough to keep doing the construction that we're doing. And I know from experience with the 3000 model, when I didn't charge it, I would still manage to finish the day with 40% left. When I'm charging it, even with just two panels, I would finish the day with the power pack still full. All right, so Jackery, we built this whole thing with the Jackery power pack and originally just the two solar panels. Now we got the 2000. We're gonna finish the project with it and then install that in there as our power for the whole little tiny house. We're gonna be off grid, no pay and power bills from the power company. Pretty sweet.
All right, it's going pretty well. I think that means we've earned a slingshot break. Chris has made a whole target range. So got some wiffle balls about 20 feet out. A little spinner, another spinner on the tree right there. We got a little spinner crow, another tiny bird spinner, and a crow spinner, well, half of another thing, and, and a big dinger at like 36 feet, 38 feet. Oh, we got a can popper down here. And last but not least, the little forged leaf up in the tree way out there. That's, I don't know, 25 feet, a little bit of elevation. We'll rig up a slingshot for Ralph. This is the Scout X, XL, XT. XT, XT. But this is the cool one with the little fiber optics on it. I'll trim these up to fit Ralph. Give him a good starting point. Nice. That's shooting good. Let's try to try it at the gong. Yeehaw. Nice shot. Loving this. This is so cool, Chris. Good job. All right, we'll set Ralph up with this guy. Um, what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to hold it like this, like so. You locked in here, yep. thumb brace there, and you're gonna shoot it gangster. You put the ammo in, hold it pinched. Now make sure when you pinch, you make a thumbs up, and you put the ammo on top. Don't let it get down behind because it'll jump over your finger and like hit the frame or something. And then you draw it down and away from you, bring it up, and you look down it just like you're looking down an arrow. And you put that fiber optic on your target and let her go. Good form. Really, everything was there. Double headshot. Nice. Oh. Keep it spinning. Oh, oh. That last what? Is the hole in the top of it too big? It kind of yeah. is Ralph's not much for taking a break. All right, go ahead. Ready? Pop that can. <laughs> Jeez, um, I forgot how much those launched. Those, it really launched. I missed it. Oh, did we just hit it at the same time? Are we brothers? Did we just become best friends? Yup. Oh my goodness. Man, that's so satisfying. We better get, I gotta get back to work. <laughs> Just one more shot. Okay, that's the nine you're going for yep, over here. Right, right there. is almost all the way on. We're just short a couple screws. So that's a pretty good day. We'll wrap it up. I'll jump down and uh, we'll pack everything up for the night. Huh! That looks like it hurt. All our rough speculations are done and we've got the roof up there. We're gonna be close to seven feet, six and a half feet at least. All right, so once I get my beam in here, it's gonna be just a little higher than this. And then we'll be able to be in the loft and it's about six and a half feet to the peak. 
which will be so nice. Plenty of room to do a little dance up there. We weren't wrong so far. Yeehaw. Plenty of room to get into the loft bed and back out of the loft bed and be able to look out the windows and have a little chair up there, maybe a built-in chair on this side where you sit and you can, you know, read and look out through those little windows down towards the lake. It's coming together. I love it when a plan comes together. I love it when a plan comes together. All right, let's see how much we used off the power pack today. What? 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 97%. And we started out at 60 something percent. It's been overcast, sprinkly, and then, you know, the sun's just not doing its thing very often. I am. Oh, I love this. I love not having the generator that's loud when I'm working on projects. I love the uh, not having to pay the power company. Being off grid, can't beat it. Stomach. So oh, we're gonna wax Chris's stomach. Some. No, Kelly Clarkson. No, we're not. Uh, Chris got brown tail moth up under his shirt, and it gets nasty. I had it on the back of my neck the other day. Duct tape is the kind of the only way to fix it, but we don't have duct tape. So we're gonna stick some 3M window tape to his stomach and peel it off. See if that fixes it some. So brown tail moth, it's not too bad, but brown tail moth, the little hairs from the brown tail moth, gross. They ruin, if you get them, a lot of times you always get them on the back of your neck and you're like, ugh. And like, why is the back of my neck all itchy? Well, that's why. Because those little hairs get to you and they're nasty little buggers. It's gonna pull all the and hair off. It's not gonna pull all the hair off. Let's we'll start light and just... People pay money to have that done. Mm -hmm. That's not so bad, right? No. All right. And this pulls the hair off of his stomach and the and the fibers out of it. See, each one of these little red welts is probably a brown tail moth hair. I swear they jump out of the trees when they see you coming. They're like, they're like, target acquired. Red six standing by. Bombing, bombing, and they just drop and roll around on you and get those little hairs on you, nasty. So that's the remedy, duct tape or any tape. Stick it on, and if it's bad, do it again. Take the, throw that tape away, try again, again with the tape, again with the tape until you feel like you're starting to feel some relief. There you go, pro tip. Brown tail moths aren't our only problem here. You might notice during some of the clips here, we're always swatting at them. And despite a lot of bug dope, this has been an extremely wet season and the mosquito problems just get worse with the more moisture. And as you can see here, they suck quite a bit of blood and they're even jerks to other bugs. I tried some of these citronella candles and they seemed to work pretty good, but they eventually burn out. Then I got the tiki torches with citronella oil, but neither is a perfect solution. So if you have any ideas, leave it in the comments below. We'd really love to get rid of more of these mosquitoes. It can't be good for you to get bit so many times. All right, so we got our little end walls to build on the cupola top, and then the eave ladders. We're gonna have to actually move the plywood. Chris is nailing all that framing together. And I'm gonna get on cutting out the material so we can finish up our roof here and put plywood on. Picked up a new saw. I was getting sick of cutting on the other side and I thought, hey, we got the power pack to charge battery packs. It makes things easier, cords not have to deal with cords. So I picked up this Flex uh, worm drive one. Something so I got some more power. <laughs> Holy cow, that makes my old saw seem like a piece of junk. The guard doesn't flip back down, it doesn't stay out of the way. It pinches when you go into a board and you always have to cut looking over it. I'm always like cutting and looking over it like this. And now it's just like so much nicer having the right hand side ability to look in on that. So nice.
it's all closed in now, minus a little framing on the end, but kind of gives me a feel of like how much light is in here. Chris is dropping, sorry. Oh, Chris yeah. is dropping nails on John. That was nails on my, my shoulder. I'm yeah. sorry. But I think uh, with the solar panels and the Jackery power pack in here, we could have a little bit of uh, ambient daylight, low added light, as well as we got all that beautiful light from those little cupola windows up there. It's pretty sweet. So I think we're pretty much calling it a wrap for today. A couple more nails to nail it off. And because uh, we want to have a fish off with Ralph so you can catch the most fish. It's uh, ah, got stuff in my eye. All right, let's uh, wrap it up and have, go have a little fishing tournament. Boom! Bob's your uncle, Fran's your aunt. Buttery, fluttery. Uh, don't forget the tip drags, the fish finders in the middle. Watch it drop off. That, I got my pole. Poles. First fish, most fish, biggest fish. Yeah, this works so good. Freaking premium. Watch out, Rob, I'm coming for you. I'm gonna sink you. Got that. I'm steering, pedaling. I put them to one notch further out. I'm gonna shorten these up. There. They could be a little shorter. There we go. That's the right length. And then when you come to short, plumb it, unlock it, pop it out. Yeah, there's no reverse. So, we got to be, oop, Johnny on the spot with their turns. Oh, Ralph's already fishing. I see how it is. They don't know the place like I do, so I'll let them. Oh, Ralph's got first fish. He's just got to touch it. Is that a fish? Yeah. Nice. There we go, a nice small mouth. Look at that, that's a big one. There you go. First fish. Like All right, going with the clown. Oh, they already moved off, and this is like the sweet spot right in here, and they're down there. But uh, let's see what we can do. He didn't touch it. <laughs> You're right. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> what the? Monster, Chris. Monster. It was. It followed me all the way to the boat. <laughs> it's a fish. It's a fish. It's official. Beautiful. Little smallmouth bass. First fish at Zach's new property, I guess. My goodness, Ralph is crushing it. Did you get one? Oh. Again? Yep. Nice. little small mouth right there nothing too huge Just let them go off to the side back into the depths oh no I just gotta get him through the weeds I got one Woo! oh nice, that looks like biggest that's a big fish oh no come on come on come on come on come on 
Don't lose him, don't lose him. Oh, well, he's barely hooked. Doesn't count till he gets it onto the boat. There we go. Oh, he's about the same size as both of your guys' small mouths there that you caught. That's where I'm pedaling for. All right, here we go. See you later, buddy. Oh, lost it in the boat. Snap my hook off, actually. You stay. Got spiders crawling on my arm. Fish jumping out of the boat. Lively, son of a gun. We're gonna have to dispatch him really quickly. How about that? There we go. Chain pickerel. Zach said save him for a uh, lobster bait. He's gonna give me five lobsters. Zach, you said five lobsters in exchange for this pickerel? Yeah, sure. Awesome, thank you. That's a deal if I've ever heard one. What'd you get? Six. Six? Nice, I got one. How about you, Chris? Lobster bait. Lobster bait, and how many others? Uh, two other small mouth. Two others? Oh, I guess that makes Ralph the official winner because he had first fish, <laughs> six fishes. I guess Ralph's gotta head back and uh, we got other things we gotta do too. I might pitch in a couple more lines in down that way before we head back. But uh, thanks Ralph for all the help. Oh, you're welcome. Appreciate that it, fun. that was good. <laughs> Woo, we gonna see, wanna go down and pitch the beaver dam with me? Pretty cool. What was it? Three, less than three years ago we were paddling lakes like this and you were every nice plot of property you'd see you'd go I wish I had a little piece of land up in there now you got it I just wish you would have chose a lake with more fish in it <laughs> the river mouth I'll have to paddle back out but oh I got one ah. <laughs> Caught the biggest of the day, I think. Hey. Beauty. Flip the levers, pull it up. There we go. Lay it down. Not bad, I did catch one that was uh, just over two pounds. Unfortunately, we're back now and it was a midday fishing so it wasn't the best. And we still gotta clean up the job site. We'll be back on it tomorrow. After a weekend of rain, Chris and I returned back to the job site and had to bring the girls with me because it turns out it, Monday was a holiday. So we didn't really put in a full day, just a half day. So after having the girls help me clean up the job site, I let them free to play around the land and Chris and I managed to frame up the last bit of the cupola so that she'd be buttoned up and ready to go with the next stage. All right, that is it for part three, pretty much. You know, I, I wanted to make it further. But we got the hard part done. You know, I learned from Ralph and from Aaron and from his father the uh, the whole using a speed square and how to calculate the pitch of the roof and how to build these now. So I think I could pretty much replicate this on another tiny house build without too much difficulty. Next hard tackle will be someday when I have to do a set of steps and how to how to calculate out that distance and the amount of steps that would end up in there so they end up right. But for the tiny house, part four, the next level is going to be uh, metal roofing. Getting the roofing done so it doesn't leak. So I've figured out I am going to actually put plywood on the ends here because I want a double layer. You know, think like a raindrop, my dad said. I was just joking when I said that's a hippy dippy thing. I want to make sure there's two ways that if a raindrop gets underneath the metal roofing somehow, by driving rain underneath the flashing and or snow build up and then the snow dam causes a freezing and then water can leak in underneath your metal roofing sometimes. This way, if I put plywood on here, tape it to my roof guard, I'll have a double layer of flashing and it will never leak. The tiny house will be secure for, I don't know, a hundred years maybe, we'll see. So maybe I'll do an update when I'm like 93 and it's been 50 years and see how this is all holding up. But for now, you're just gonna have to live with what you got. There's so much space inside of here. I mean, half of this being loft, I can stand up in there. It looks really nice. Looking out the windows when you get out of bed in the morning towards the lake, the view is gorgeous. And Chris did a great job. We took down a bunch of the little brush that was in here. So there's a little bit more open 
with those slingshot range down here now. Targets in the trees here, 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 here. One last addition down the hill. Forgot about this guy I had. A little pheasant targets. Boing! Alright. We'll shoot uh, Tim Henry's Falcon that he traded me at the East Coast Slingshot Tournament with one of our custom imp pouches here I make. Wow, that pheasant is hard to see. That's kind of cool. It's a little on the camo side. Ooh, just missed. Got him! Oh, I like this shooting range. This is so cool. Nice. So we'll get the door in next time. I got a flash underneath these windows up here. So there's that double layer of protection between the building and sneaky raindrops. But it is a little bit darker in here than uh, would be nice if you're really trying to make a sandwich at the kitchen. If you're trying to sit here and read, you might want a little light here. And that's where our sponsor comes into this. We got the Jackery Explorer 2000 Plus. We'll wire that into the tiny house with some extended battery packs. And I just wanted to share this with you. This is, we keep saying this, this is the RV outlet on the Jackery. Well, I bought an adapter and now I have one more regular outlet. When I'm working, I might be able to run a couple more battery chargers off of there and not take away from the extension cord that I need to run to the chop saw. So with that adapter, now I have four regular outlets and that adapted outlet so I can run the chop saw off of that and be able to not have to unplug things and move things around. And this thing's been a champ. We've been running three tools off it at a time. The compressor kicks on while the table saw is going and nothing kicks off, no breakers flip. And I finally did run it down a bit. Last two days of running projects on it and it's at 18% and I haven't been running the solar. But if you wanna know more about it, there's also a link in the description to the Fowler Extra, which is more of a gear video side of it where I go over like its capabilities by plugging into the house, how long you can get your refrigerator to run off of it, how long you can get uh, a heater, an AC unit. It really could be a life-saving unit if you live in a hot place and you lose power. Grandma's getting too hot, she's overheating, gonna give her a stroke from uh, not staying cool and you could run over, rescue her with this. Or you're just using it to build a tiny house off grid or power it after it's done so that you can have some light in there on a rainy day and read a book or watch a movie. So thank you Jackery for sponsoring this video. Thank you guys for watching and lots of great adventures, lots of car noise too. Lots of great adventures coming. Waterworld 2.0 and Seven Day Island Survival Challenge. If we get Greg down here, we'll spend seven days surviving on some island somewhere and building all kinds of neat stuff. And we will see you guys in the next one. Fowler out. So how have you guys been in the YouTube world? Have you been getting outside? Getting fresh air, having fun. I hope so. Because that is what life is all about. Yep, that's a fish. Oh, no, 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 no. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on.